Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Syncopated Bass Exercises Part 2. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at some of this, which is 16th note syncopation. Roll that intro. If you search the web for the definition of syncopation, you'll find quotes like, a type of musical rhythm where the strong notes are not on the beat. A shifting of the normal accent, usually by stressing normally unaccented beats. A disturbance or interruption of the regular flow of rhythm. Placement of rhythmic stresses or accents where they wouldn't normally occur. But today's video isn't so much about textbook definitions, it's about putting it into practice and having fun with it. If you haven't already watched Syncopated Bass Exercises Part 1, I highly recommend you check it out. The link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below. In that video, we look at eighth notes, which is a great foundation to then jump into this lesson where we're looking at 16th notes. But to quickly recap, we learned that over a 4-4 rhythm, we can count eight quicker or shorter beats over the same space as the four main strong beats. To demonstrate that, if we take a bar of 4-4 four, four and count over it like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then simply insert the word and in between those numbers, we get this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, which gives us eighth notes. We then learnt that syncopation is accenting and or emphasising the and beats rather than the strong one, two, three, four beats. And this in turn allows us to create really interesting, lively phrases and bass lines. Today we're going to take things to the next level and apply the same principles to 16th notes. 16th notes, or 16ths, refers to 16 short or quick beats or notes over the same space as that one, two, three, four count. If I was to play every 16th in a bar, it would sound like this. Here's a really easy way to break the bar down into 16. Just like with eighth notes, we're going to start by counting four in a bar like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But this time, instead of just inserting the word and in between those numbers, which, if you remember, is what we did to arrive at eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. We have the phrase E and A, which slowly sounds like this. One E and A. Two E and A. Three E and A. Four E and A. But to make life a lot easier, we drop the D on the word and, and so we get E and A. And that sounds like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. You might have already guessed that it's accenting or emphasizing those E and a beats rather than the strong one, two, three, four beats that gives us 16th note syncopation and creates a really cool, funky and lively sound. And it really opens the world up in terms of creativity. Let me now give you a few examples of 16th note syncopation in action. Here we go. I'm just going to try and come up with a few ideas off the cuff. Just got a kind of 16th um, rhythm going on. Two, three, four. All right, let's try another one. <laughs> another one. Another one. Two, three, four. Okay, let, um, let me think now. One more. Two, three, four. Ha. 
That kind of stuff is definitely what you call very syncopated. And I was using an awful lot of those E Anna beats. Building a strong command of 16th notes is kind of vital in getting into this 16th note syncopation stuff. And with that in mind, I've created a free PDF that you can download. The link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below the video. And in that PDF, along with a bunch of examples that I've created for you, there's quite a lengthy section I've created called Building Command of Sixteenths, which is designed to help you really master sixteenths in a methodical way. So do be sure to download it. I'm sure it'll really help. Speaking of sixteenths, you probably already noticed that at higher tempos, say 100 BPM and above, sixteenths move fast very, very quickly and can be really challenging and demanding to play. Bass lines that leverage this fast and furious, relentless sixteenths sound include Teen Town, played by Jaco Pastorius, Hit Me With Your Rhythm Stick, played by Norman Watroy, and Level 42's Mr. Pink, played by Mark King. All those bass lines are generally considered advanced or difficult or even impossible by some, and it's because nearly all the bass line is made up of fast sixteenths. In other words, nearly every sixteenth is being played. <laughs> The great news is 16th note syncopation can be applied in an extremely effective and powerful way just by accenting one or two ianas in a bar and at any tempo. In fact, 16th note syncopation at slower tempos sounds absolutely fantastic. The trick with 16th note work is to start very slowly, and I mean very slowly, and gradually work up the tempo. For me, the use of a drum machine, or at the very least a metronome, is non-negotiable. Generally speaking, drum rhythms with names like disco, 16 beat, dance, things like that, will almost always incorporate some kind of 16th, usually on the hi-hats, and this really gives you something to lock into when you're working on 16th. If you don't already have a dedicated unit, there are scores of apps that you can download for your smartphone that'll do the job. But if you can afford it, I do highly recommend getting a dedicated unit for practice. I currently use the drum machine built into the Zoom B14 multi-effects unit, and I use that whenever I'm teaching, practicing, or making YouTube videos like this. It's a fantastic unit, it's really affordable. It's like a Swiss army knife of bass tools. It's got a tuner, it's got a looper, it's a fantastic multi-effects unit, it's a headphone amp, and it's a drum machine. It's a great thing. There's a link in the description below the video if you wanna check them out for yourself. It's an affiliated link, so it does give me and the channel a tiny kickback, but it doesn't cost you any more. Now I could make this video really long and go on for hours, showing you examples of 16th note syncopation and then breaking it down one 16th at a time but it really would be a very long video so like i mentioned before download the pdf that's in the description below and i've written out 10 licks and phrases which i think are pretty good examples of 16th note syncopated lines and i've also included audio recordings of each lick at 100 bpm and at 50 bpm so you can hear it fast and slow and really get your ears around it and I believe that time spent with that PDF in your own practice schedule will be time really well spent. What I'd quickly like to do now is show you a way that you can create your own 16th note syncopated lines, even if you've never done this before, and even if you don't read music. Some years ago, when I was teaching at college, I came up with the idea of creating a really simple grid system in order to create random 8th note and 16th note rhythms. I just called them 8th note and 16th note rhythm grids. Wow. How original. And as a bonus, I've attached those as the last two pages in the PDF download. This is the eighth note grid. So along the top there, you'll just see the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And those are our eighth notes. And then below that, I've written the one and two and three and four and way of counting. And I've done the same with sixteenths. So here we go. So we've got the 16 along the top, um, and then we've got the, the, the regular count in this kind of like darker blue, and then the E Anna in between. And all you do is you go ahead and you put marks in random boxes. And what that in turn does is creates a rhythm. So let's give that a quick try. So for this first example, I'm just gonna use 
X's and I'm going to put them in random boxes along here. Okay. So I'm just going to do, I'm, you know, just being totally random and I'm going to do that. Right. Now, if we take the one E and a two E and a et cetera count, and we do that kind of quietly, but just make louder any of these that have an X below, it's going to work like this. Here we go. One E and A, two E and A. Let's just stick with that little section before we get the rest of it in. Let's try that again. Once again, we're going to count one E and A quietly. One E and A. But we're going to kind of shout or accent the ones that have an X under. Check it out. One E and A, two E and A. Again, one E and A. To E and A. Next move is to try that with a drum machine. So I'm going to put a 16th beat rhythm on at 40 BPM. Now those, now those hi-hats, those, they are 16th notes. And even at 40 BPM, they're still kind of quick. All right, check it out. One E and A, two E and A, and so on. Now let's try our little exercise on the rhythm grid along with that. Here we go. So here we go. We're going to accent the ones with the X under and the rest we're going to say more quietly. And we're just going to get up to this point for now. Here we go. One E and A, two E and A. One E and A, two E and A. One E and A, two E and A. One E and A. A to E and A, one E and A, two E and A, one E and A, two E and A. And we just keep doing that in a loop until we get really confident with it and we've got it completely nailed. Now let's add the second half of that line. I'm just going to concentrate on the second half. I'm going to leave that B for a minute and let's see what we've got. Three E and A, four E and A, three E and A, four E and A. Again. 3E e and A, 4E e and A. Now let's try that with the drums. 3E e and A, 4E e and A. 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 And now I'm going to try and string the whole thing together. One E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A, one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. Again, you keep doing that until you got it really, really locked in. You, you got to take more breaths than I was doing. That was hard work. Of course, the next move is to transfer that onto the bass. And all you do is only play the notes that we accented or put an X under. And the example we're currently working on would sound like this. You can use any note. I'm going to use the note C. Here we go. One E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A, one E and A, two E and A, three E and A, four E and A. And you just keep that going until it starts to feel more natural. It's actually a great idea to record yourself when you're doing this kind of thing. And then when you hear it back, you're listening to it as music and not just numbers. And that's how it becomes part of your musical vocabulary. You know, the more you do this kind of stuff, you're kind of inputting more rhythmic ideas into your soul. And when you're working on this stuff, you build the tempo very, very gradually. I'm going to shortcut that a little bit so you can hear what happens as it gets faster. But generally speaking, you want to just increase the tempo by like 5 or 10 BPM max at a time, maybe less than 5. Just increase it very gradually over time. That was at 40 BPM, so I'm going to be naughty and put that up to 60 BPM right away. That sounds like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E 
Yana, four Yana, one Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana, eighty BPM. One Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana, one Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana, one Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana, one Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana. A hundred BPM. One Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana, one Yana, two Yana, three Yana, four Yana. Now at that tempo, for me anyway, it starts to get quite difficult and clumsy for me to actually marry with that one Yana thing over and over again. And so for me, that's the point where I want to start hearing that as music and less as numbers. So again, a good way to do that might be to record yourself at a slower tempo and then play your bass along with that recording. And because of the repetition you've just been doing, you've been programming this stuff into your muscle memory, and that should make things a lot easier. And when you reach that point, like I just did, where it's difficult to kind of marry with the one Yana thing, you need to start internalizing the time. So for me, that might be hearing a kind of hi-hat thing in my mind's ear, if that's a thing, or like a shaker. And that's kind of what I'll lock into. So what I'm going to do now is have another go at playing that phrase. I think I've kind of learned it now just as music, you know, just like a call and response thing. So I'm going to mouth it a couple of times and then attempt to play it without mouthing anything. Here we go. One Yana, a two Yana, three Yana, four Yana. All right. Interesting, but the moment you remove those counts, it starts to sound a lot more like music. And you can keep on creating rhythm after rhythm, and it's a great way to really explore those sixteenths. And to get even more creative, you could use your own shorthand. You could create a system where an O is a sounded note, like this. Maybe an X now becomes a muted note. Maybe an A is an accented note, where you play it quite a bit louder. And maybe the spaces are no notes at all. And by using those ideas on top of what we've already talked about, going to be creating some incredibly funky sounding lines. By the way, I actually created an entire video on how to do this called Use Maths to Create New Musical Ideas. The link is on the screen now. It's also in the description below the video. Go check that out after this video. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, don't forget to like, share and subscribe because it really, really helps the channel. Oh, and if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notified whenever I make a new video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to grab the free PDF download and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.